morning. Good morning. So we're having some great luck in Belgrade. Uh, it's been raining for like the past week. And on our first day off, it decides to be nice and sunny. When warm too. Yeah. It's super warm and sunny. It's like perfect. Not too hot, not too cold. So we're really excited. Gizmo's out. <laughs> He's so a little bit disoriented, I think, because of the sounds and like the. Madness. Yeah, he's a bit tense right now, but we're gonna we're here to celebrate his belated birthday. <laughs> Hopefully, looking for somewhere that's uh, nice and quiet for him, so that he can explore and look around without too much stress. Yes, we're so we're headed to a bakery. Uh, it's supposed to be like the best brick in Belgrade, so that's exciting. But we're planning to just get a bunch of stuff from the bakery and then sit down somewhere quiet and. Try it while letting yeah. Gizmo kind of enjoy outside. What do you think? So the tram dropped us off right in front of the bakery, the Kara Tripkovich. Um, it's got a big line, which is a good sign. <laughs> that was an interesting that experience. That was busy, man. Yeah, it was really busy. We ended up getting a lot of food. <laughs> um, like a lot. Enough to eat for the rest of the day and maybe a little bit of tomorrow too. Yeah, and I think they were so happy that we pretty much bought out the bakery that they gave us two of these for free. <laughs> I don't know what they are, but... It was good. We it was got... it was so funny though because we ordered so much that they're not used to that, so they're like, more? Yeah. More? Exactly. This this has to be enough, yeah. right? More? Yeah. A yogurt too. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we ended up spending around fifteen hundred dinar, which is nineteen Canadian dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is kind of our breakfast and lunch. And maybe so dinner too. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of food. Yeah. Alright, so here we go. Here's the Birik. Here's the hall. <laughs> so uh, here's the meat Birik. And this is fresh out of the oven. Like they, like we waited in line and then they slapped it on the platter and then chopped it to pieces and handed it out. So that's the freshest you can possibly get right there. And then this one is the cheese Birik. And it's got that classic soft cheese we're seeing everywhere. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Looks really good. Also a fresh one. And then we got a bunch of other stuff that doesn't fit on the table. Yeah. Um, but these did. They're like... I think little cinnamon croissant thing. Yeah, we're assuming they're cinnamon. I'm gonna try a bite. Mm. Yeah, that's like sugar cinnamon. Nice. Nice. Yeah, and then we got two cappuccinos and some yogurt to eat the burek with. So we found out that not only is burek just really good with yogurt, but it also helps you digest the burek because it's so oily. Apparently, like the probiotics and the yogurt help with the digestion. So. I don't know, it's like a two for one. We had some of our coffee and now we got some yogurt to drink with the beer. I'm shaking it up. And we got, for the beer, we got one meat, one cheese, and then we also got like a cherry one. So that'll be good for like dessert. Okay. I'll try and make less of a mess today. <laughs> um, Okay. So I'm gonna take a bite of the cheese. It's really good. This work is much less crunchy than the other ones, but it's also, I guess, less dry. So Nick's not a big fan of the yogurt, <laughs> so he's gonna try his meat burger without it. Look at that, eh? Yeah, it looks incredible. Mm. Looks incredible. Tastes incredible. I think that one's more crispy than the meat than the cheese one. I think so. Maybe really because good. it's more fresh. Mm. I feel bad because Gizmo's just watching us eat, so I figured we'll give him a little treat. So he loves yogurt. Let's see how he feels about this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I'm eating a pretzel right now, which is uh, uh, really, really good. Uh, the one thing that they do differently from the other bakeries that we've noticed is not only do they salt them on top, but they also butter them, which just gives it that extra, you know, number of calories that's required to make it taste extra good. But a uh, huge fan of that. Best pretzel I've had in Europe so far. Yeah, I couldn't even get a video fast enough. That's why I almost got. Yeah. We're definitely slowing down and we're not even like 25% through our bag. So it'll probably feed us all day and that's a good thing. Um, but we're gonna try our next item, which is a chocolate croissant. So as you guys probably remember, our top chocolate croissant is still the Bravica Bakery from Zagreb. But let's see if this one stands up to the test. So, <laughs> break it in the middle so that the first bite actually contains chocolate. Yeah, so we're learning about like this region is that it's either raining or it's windy. Like you can't get a sunny, windless day. Yeah. Also, side note, I love this yogurt. Nick doesn't really like it. It's really just like plain yogurt, but it's thin enough to drink. And I'm kind of obsessed with it as a drink. And another side note, you can probably tell <laughs> I'm drinking coffee for the first time all week. Another side note is that we actually ordered most of our orders in Serbia, which is pretty impressive. For and us. and by we she means she because she's really picking it up fast. The good thing is that most Balkan countries have the same language. It's basically like Serbo-Croatian is what we learned on our tour. And so instead of having to relearn different words for different languages in each country, we can mostly speak the same language, just different dialects. So hopefully by the end of the trip, we'll be a little bit fluent in Serbo-Croatian if fluent means talking about things you can find in big so now it's time to actually try the croissant. It's pretty good. Looks like they have chocolate chips inside instead of like a chocolate filling, but let's see. It's definitely good. I think the Robic is still better. Um, but I think Nick is gonna really like this one because it's dark chocolate. Alright, let's give it a shot. I agree with your it's all right. Okay. It's all right, but you're right. Dubrovka knocks out of the park. I think it's because Dubrovka uses like chocolate hazelnut paste instead of chocolate chips. Okay. Adopted the darkness. Yes. I was born in it. <laughs> Molded by it. <laughs> Alright, so one thing I'm noticing about Serbia is uh, they're a lot more patriotic than Croatia. You see, we got uh, two Serbian flags there, and then we got another Serbian flag right here, and then on those buildings way over there, we got a few more. Yeah, it's just interesting. They uh, they love their country here a lot more. They're a lot more representative of that. Okay, so change of plans. We're now on an electric bus. We're now on an electric bus. <laughs> Um, headed to the Partisan Stadium. Yeah. So we were told by somebody in the comments today to go to the Derby, which is like, I think a big football match, like soccer football, um, between Belgrade's two rival teams. And we've actually heard people talking about them and how it's like very controversial here, um, like based on which team you pick, Red Star or Partisan. So we're gonna try and get tickets. We're headed to Partisan Stadium because I googled it and it says that's where you buy the tickets even though I think the game is in a different stadium. They're close to each other anyway, like within a 20 minute walk, so we'll see. My favorite team is the one that wins. Yeah. So the locals <laughs> are very passionate about their football here. 
Uh, the clip following uh, will show you why we assume that. <laughs> <laughs> so we got off the bus here um, at the stadium, but a few blocks back we've noticed that there are like police um, like barricades, like police with like shields on pretty much every corner. And so we're wondering if it's about the game, but either way, we're kind of scared, kind of excited. <laughs> Sorry, not scared. No, no, we're excited, I mean. <laughs> Oh, another one. <laughs> so the so we just uh, made it past the wall of police officers in riot gear. Don't mind the large booming sounds behind us. <laughs> I think they're they're like ringing drums and stuff. Anyways, yeah. they they before we could even go near the stadiums, uh, they searched our bags and everything. And that like, where are you from? What are you doing? You know, like, why are you yeah. here? Well, they said they said not to worry that it's just routine. So I think. Maybe when they have large games like this, they just have a bunch of security. Yeah. Which I guess makes us feel a little safer. It's just not something we're used to. Yeah. The shields and everything. Yeah, you can see over yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they are uh, very passionate people. They love their football. Yeah, which makes us even more excited to see it. So. Yeah. And uh, don't worry, I'll keep her safe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go up the street a bit here. There's literally thousands of these guys. <laughs> Police, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm thinking like, so what do these guys do? Like like the people who come to watch the game, do they just watch the game, get really drunk, get pissed at whatever the uh, whatever the result of the game is, and then just like be like, all right, I need a cop to punch. Like, Seems kind of chaotic. <laughs> yeah. We can hear the chanting of the stadium from like blocks away. Bad news. Uh, we, uh, we're directed vaguely by a few people who are trying to buy tickets. And then finally, two people told us that the game sold out. Mm -hmm. However, um, people like resell tickets. So we're gonna try and come back later, closer to the start of the game, see if we can get a resell ticket at a good price. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I, fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. Cause it looks like it's gonna be insane. Like, especially because it's sold out. Yeah. It looks like it'll be really, really fun. Yeah, it's it's definitely like the main attraction for the locals around here. Uh, a f interesting thing that we noticed while getting there is that the two primary rival teams that are competing today, their, their home stadiums are neighbors to each yeah. other. Yeah. Like the Partisan Stadium is just around the corner from the Red Star Stadium. Yeah, we actually had to go through, we didn't have to, but we went through the Partisan Stadium to get to the Red Star Stadium. Yeah. It was so crazy too, like the crowds get thicker and louder yeah. and they're all chanting and there's walls of riot police. Like, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> so I feel like it'll be like, we have to see like the outcome of one of the games at least. I know there will probably be others while we're here in Belgrade, mm -hmm. but this one seems to be like the big, big game, uh, the Derby. <laughs> Yeah. So, fingers crossed we'll be able to get resale tickets, but for now, we're going to go check out the Yugoslavia Museum because it's right it's right here, pretty much. Um, but yeah, so that's one of the things on our bucket list that we wanted to check off anyway, so yeah. let's see how it is. Anything for the vlogs? that is dedicated to Tito himself. Clearly his influence was enormous and he was a lifelong leader of Yugoslavia. And when he passed away at the age of 87 uh, in 1988, it caused a huge movement of change within the region. So Tito was loved immensely by so many of the people uh, in Yugoslavia and uh, largely because he did a pretty darn good job considering, you know, the circumstances. Under his power, um, Yugoslavia gained a lot of wealth and increased the quality of life of a lot of their people uh, from what it was beforehand. 
And so there's plenty of reason to, uh, controversial as it is, but it's, uh, it's a very interesting part of the past here. And so that room there, with all the toys and fun stuff, is based off of his books. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that's them chanting from the stadium that's like 20 minutes away. A 20 minute walk. <laughs> so, yeah. so, we just finished with the museum. It was great. We loved it. It was, I think it's the most fun museum so far. And now we're headed back to the stadium to see if we can buy some tickets uh, from a scalper. Some scalpers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, we asked like seven more people about where to find tickets. They all said sold out, sold out, sold out. We found two suspicious looking dudes behind the counter. They were at an info counter, but they asked for 50 American dollars basically for these two cards, which is about what? Four or five times, four the, times price. the price. Yeah. Four times the price. But it is sold out. It so. is sold out everywhere. But here's the thing, right? After we bought the tickets, I looked behind me side eye and they're like, you know, they're kind of like smirking and stuff to each we'll other. See. drama no one's even scored a goal yet getting home and we know the place is going to be like so flooded and we're, it's going to be hard yeah. to find a tram home so but that was a nice little taste unlike anything we've ever seen they were just like throwing bombs at the field and like so the the partisan team so like the uh not the home team 
Yeah, um, although they, they're both Belgrade teams, like they're just right across from each other. Yeah, like not home to the stadium, right? Yeah. Uh, ever, when they scored a goal or if any any <laughs> event happened that was of any significance whatsoever, you know, the goalie farted or anything like that, <laughs> they would rip their chairs out of like the concrete, out of the stadium, of the stadium and throw it over the fence into like onto the, the field onto the field just and, so, <laughs> and so they're now but like it's only half time and there's already like a small pile of shredded chairs <laughs> like <laughs> like <laughs> so many chairs yeah another thing too like nobody was sitting down everyone was like standing up jumping yeah. um the guy in front of us was like <laughs> Like so dramatic. He and he had like a lot of money on partisan. Yeah. He was like frothing at the mouth when red. Yeah. He was literally like like he was like he was yelling <laughs> at the at the field and spit was like you know. But yeah, it was fun. I would say like the spectators were even more entertaining than the game because yeah. it was so lively. Like the energy was great. Optimum, it was so fun. Optimum people watching for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And for us, we're not huge like soccer football people. So like it, it was worth it for us just to go for half, just to see like the atmosphere and everything. Yeah, for sure. Um, I guess we were sitting in the partisan section, so hope partisan wins. But oh, we don't love say both that. Games. Don't we love both teams. Hope, <laughs> I hope both win. I hope. <laughs> just because we. So I guess like for our friends and family that don't know, here it's like a super like dividing subject like yeah. which Belgrade team you go for yeah. and someone asked our tour guide whether he was for a partisan or for Red Star and he wouldn't even answer because he didn't want to start a fight <laughs> so it's like I mean from what we've heard it's very intense so yeah we love both teams and we hope both yeah that's possible <laughs> right for both to win every yeah. time yeah. all right then that's what we're hoping yeah. for yeah. but that was amazing um we left as they were tied so happy yeah. ending for us <laughs> Well, <laughs> I guess we'll check the we'll check online to see who wins for real. Maybe we'll yeah. um, maybe we'll uh, see the riot police come in handy. Yeah, you know? that's another reason we wanted to duck out early because it's gonna. It, there well, were like police yeah. with shields and stuff on literally every block within a what one kilometer, yeah. two kilometer radius. They're clearly predicting violence here, so <laughs> let's get. And out it's of here. a big game, from what we heard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, update I guess on the tickets. Obviously, they worked. Um, but yeah, I think it was like we definitely got lucky because we could have been scammed. But yeah, yeah, I think we paid. So the regular price of the tickets that we got would have been, I think, 500. Yeah, I think 600 dinar, which is like seven or eight uh, Canadian dollars. But we ended up paying 4,000 for two tickets, yeah. which is about maybe like 25. 50. Yeah, yeah. 50 bucks total yeah. Canadian. Which is honestly a steal. Like, when we went to the Raptors game, it cost us like $100 per person buying yeah. it the day of. But here, buying tickets for a sold out game, only 50 bucks, I think that's a win. <laughs> Definitely worth yeah. the experience for sure. So glad we ticked that off our bucket list. Right? Yeah, no, yeah. it was super fun. So let's, uh, let's make our way back before the trams get full. Yeah. And, and we're uh, headed home to finish all the stuff that we got from the bakery. Yeah. It definitely it, it will feed us all day today, so that's a, another win. Oh, and in case anyone's worried, we didn't bring Gizmo to the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, dropped we dropped him, him off. We dropped him off at the apartment before we uh, made our way here, so yeah. he was not traumatized from all the loud noise. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. I'm um, honestly I'm glad that it worked out. Another thing too, like we were trying to find someone who speaks English because when we were about to be let in. To um, like the lady said I couldn't come in because I had a bottle in my bag like a water bottle and it was empty like I emptied it out but she said I can't bring it in and so she kept pointing vaguely into one direction and we asked probably like seven different people and all of them either didn't speak English or were like too busy to talk to us yeah uh, and we finally found out that we had to give our bags to somebody um, yeah, and they gave us like a little number yeah. for the bag. And, uh, and so yeah. we were like, okay, hopefully we're able to see these bags again. Um, <laughs> yeah, that but, made me nervous, honestly. Yeah, and it was to the same guys that gave us the tickets. So we put a lot of faith in them, yeah. and they came through. So. I was worried. I, they just looked like two random teenagers, honestly. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, he's, oh my God. Yeah. It stressed me out, but uh, I'm glad that everything worked out. Yeah. Uh, so, good. yeah, that was cool. But. But yeah, so we're headed home. And I guess we'll see you guys tomorrow. See you tomorrow.